erosion. Sometimes this can be a word that elicits some negative emotions, <laughs> but if you really think about it, is it that bad? Erosion is just a simple fact of sediment leaving an area and sometimes it can cause the shoreline to transgress or to move landward. That shoreline transgression is a natural process that has been happening for about 20,000 years here and we expect for it to happen well into the future. So I ask again, is it really that bad? What's that? Got it. So for better or for worse, we've got a lot of businesses and infrastructure and houses along our coastline. And I'm not gonna argue with anyone about that today, but it does turn those coastal processes like shoreline transgression and coastal erosion from things that we can see in our data and see observationally into things that now threaten those businesses and infrastructure and houses that are on the coast. So you could really argue that these processes are now bad. This brings us to a bit of a fork in the road of how to deal with and prevent these terrible issues of coastal erosion and shoreline transgression, a kid. But these dealing with and preventing things are under the umbrella of coastal management. And it kind of comes into two flavors. On one side, we have soft coastal management, things like dredging or nourishment or bypassing. We're basically taking sand from one place and manually shoving it to another place where we want it. On the other side, we have hard coastal management, which includes things like jetties and breakwaters and groins where we're putting hard structure in to alter the dynamics of an area which kind of pulls or pushes sand into the place that we want it to go. Now, if you live on the east coast of the United States, you are probably so triggered out of your mind that you're about to leave me a comment already. Please, maybe just watch the whole video and then be nice. If you don't live on the east coast of the US and don't really know what I'm talking about, just read a couple of the comments. And if you are one of the three people on my master's committee, hey, um, you're probably angry at me for really horrifically oversimplifying a very complex and case by case nuanced issue that often comes with a solution of both hard and soft coastal management. Things like a twin set of jetties to stabilize an inlet with a sand bypassing system, hard and soft. So we're gonna break it down as best we can here and we're gonna be nice to each other. <laughs> Thanks. Also, by the way, uh, my name's Grant. I work here in Delaware in marine science and I happen to specialize in sandy beaches, like literally that one right there. So we're definitely in my wheelhouse this week and I love making these videos just to provide a little bit of context to people who can't experience the ocean and all the questions that we have about it every day. So if you wanna help me keep up some of the momentum we've got on this tiny little channel, Liking, subscribing, and sharing this with people that you love really, really helps me out. Thank you. Look at this. Wait a minute. This is how much erosion we are talking about here. That road is gone. These towers, they're in the sand and there are pictures from like a few years ago of them being surrounded by water at high tide. So I don't know the exact date of that photo. Maybe somebody can help me out here. But we have lost a lot of sand and so those towers are obviously not in use anymore and the road has been deconstructed to my knowledge. And now the 
towers, you can see water coming around them at high tide, usually during the summertime. So although those towers are not in use anymore, the parking lot here definitely is. So how do we protect it? And not to mention this historic fort that we have here as well. And also this beautiful overlook. Oh, thank God for lap mics. So if you spent a little bit of if you spent a little bit of time around Delaware, you can probably recognize this spot here as the jetty. So you can probably guess that what I'm standing on right here is in fact it's a, it's a groin. Regardless, it plays a super important role in keeping the beach here nice and wide and keeping the parking lots and the fort and the overlook safe from erosion. So how do two piles of rock, one right here and one right down over there, keep this sand here? To answer that, let's back up a little bit and just take a look at how Delaware works. Delaware's changing shoreline. Chris Craft, 1971. Let's see what we've got in here. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That's it. Over a long period of time, the tides and the winds and the waves on Delaware's coastline have created this net sediment drift, generally, from south to north, from, according to this other paper that I found, from about Fenwick Island all the way up to Cape Henlopen. Side note, this is what is forming Cape Henlopen. It's that conveyor belt of sediment over a long period of time that then just deposits on the tip of the cape. The other thing, this, I was not expecting to find this. Look at this. Erosion, 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 erosion. Erosion, erosion, erosion. It looks like pretty much everywhere has been eroding in Delaware since as long as records go back in 1843. The conveyor belt of sediment and the erosion that happens here in Delaware are both processes that we have known about for a very long time. Oh wow, I could read this all day. I actually have read most of this. So now instead of letting all of the sediment just flow northward, we kind of clog the drain a little bit right at the place that we want to protect. Great. Well, there is a little bit of a problem with that. Let's see if we can see it with this. <laughs> no way. Can't make this shit up. Good morning, Joanne. So yeah, we're starting to really see it here. This is an absolutely classic pattern when groins get put in place. Um, the updrift side fills up with sand and then that protects the parking lot, but then the downdrift side, which is over here, gets eroded. So it turns out that the erosion doesn't really get stopped. It actually just gets relocated. As you can see here, not really much of an issue. But what happens if we put a road really close to that shoreline? There's like nothing under it too. So maybe not this close to the shoreline, but before we take a look at this situation, let's back up a little bit. I'm now about 10 miles south of the jetty, which is actually two groins, at the Indian River Inlet. And although these two rock formations here might look the same, they are built for a completely different purpose. Each day, our inland bays here in Delaware fill up and drain out with the tides, twice. And it's a massive amount of area and therefore a massive amount of water. And the only way for all that water to get in and out is through this 500 foot cap that is right here below me on this noisy bridge. Before these two jetties were created, the waves and the currents would shape shift the old natural sandy inlet into all these crazy shapes 
that would sometimes even close off from the ocean completely. Now with a four and a half billion dollar per year economy in just the inland bays alone supporting over 35,000 jobs, it's not hard to see why stable deep water access to the ocean in a consistent location is pretty necessary. So these two jetties were put in here to literally jet the water in and out of the inlet each day, twice with the tides, making a nice stable deep access channel that is always here in the same place. And now we have a nice stable piece of land to put a bridge on. Wait a minute. Oh, that's bad. So back in 2012, the Army Corps of Engineers built the new bridge that I was just standing on. And they had to build it parallel to the old bridge um, to, so that there was something still there for people to drive on. So they built the new bridge landward of the old bridge and then they had to deconstruct the old bridge after they built the new bridge. But do you remember what else happened in fall of 2012? <laughs> my oh my gosh. All the debris on the beach is the old highway that never got cleaned up and was broken apart by Hurricane Sandy. And it's now on the beach, it's now in the water, people are getting injured on it. So as a side note, this is a really hard thing to clean up because of how dynamic the beach is. These pieces of asphalt and concrete are getting buried and then re-exposed and so we have to be really targeted with how we clean them up. My friend Crystal has been doing an amazing job organizing cleanups with our state and with our local surf rider chapter. Go follow her on Instagram if you're interested in helping out because she does an amazing job of planning these. Well, why is this place eroding? Well, it comes down to a few things. First of all, this entire place is just eroding. It, it's a fact. Just like up further north, so is the entire coastline here. However, we have the compounding effect of the twin jetties, which are clogging the drain just like the groins are up north, but inadvertently this time. So now on the upper side, over on the south side, it's full of sand. But here on the north side, which is the downdrift side, we obviously have a little bit of a dire situation. All right. Well, so I was not planning on coming back to Northside this video, but we are going off script here. We just had a bit of a storm um, the last few days and it really, it was, an, it was an unnamed storm. There was not crazy wave heights. There was a little bit of storm surge, about two and a half feet, but it did a number on our beaches here, especially this one. So we're back. I'm gonna go on a walk here with you. And I think what you're going to see may surprise you a little bit. This is an amazing case study into like what erosion does in just a few days. Let's take a look. different types of coastal structure and nourishment programs. 
And it's important to note here also that I really, really oversimplified everything to do with this video. I did my entire master's thesis on the jetty up north and how it responds to storms. And I had way more questions when I ended than when I started. So if anyone tries to tell you that they know everything here, they're either lying or they're complete idiot. So to me, erosion is a really interesting, fascinating process that I love studying. But to some of my friends in Dewey Beach, it threatens their homes. But also to the piping plovers at the tip of the Cape, it also supplies the sediment that is their nesting grounds. And honestly, my job here is pretty secure because of erosion getting worse due to the frequency and intensity of storms and the sea level rise, both due to climate change. So why don't we just put a bunch of groins and jetties like some of the ones that we have here all up and down the coast every hundred yards to armor it from erosion, <coughs> New Jersey. There are plenty of compelling reasons, but also why don't we just nourish the beach with what it's actually made from everywhere. There's lots of reasons for that too. Nothing um, too revolutionary out there, but the can of worms has been open. Sounds like sounds like Chamber of Secrets or something. Um, but like, not all the worms are out yet. So be sure to subscribe. And stick around for part two, where we are going to be looking at some tasty sand slurry and how we pump it and move it around the beach. Um, if you missed it, I posted a video probably a couple months ago now about Delaware's beaches and why they're so different from other places like even Astig, which is like 20 miles south of us. In the meantime, I'll be back in a few weeks and I'll see you real soon. Bye.